Hey pre-calc, in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to graph sine and cosine again, but now we're going to focus on phase shifts. Um, so phase shift is moving it to the left and to the right, up and down. Um, but phase shift is typically just moving it left or right, and the vertical shift is the axis. So we need to make sure that we remember the transformation or the generalized equations and like how it affects sine and cosine. So a sine of bx plus c plus d. And for cosine, same idea, but y equals a cosine bx plus c plus d. Okay, so if you remember back to the other day, um, A, or the absolute value of A, is going to be your amplitude, which is the, diff uh, the distance between the axis, the sinusoidal axis and the mass, the sinusoidal axis and the min. Um, the midline or sinusoidal axis is y equals whatever d is. All right, then we have the period which is 2 pi over b and this should make sense because right one cycle right going once around the unit circle is 2 pi and so b because it's the x value that's going to affect that distance right the horizontal distance so we're going to divide it by b um You can also think, in case you're asked for transformations, um, vertical shift is whatever that positive, right? It's either going up D or down D. This is all kind of a review. The part that's new is a phase shift. So to figure out the phase shift, um, my preference is to do, you take your bx plus c and you set it equal to zero, and then you just solve. Um, or you do negative c divided by the absolute value of b, which, I mean, right, x would equal that, right? If we subtract c and then we're going to have to divide by b. So these mean the exact same thing. But this seems more intuitive to me, so usually I just go straight for this. Okay, so when you're graphing, you're going to want to include um, your period and critical points. Maybe we should just list it. When graphing, so you want to, I would make a list. And you're just going to solve for your axis, your amplitude, your period, your critical point distance, phase shift, and if you're graphing by hand, your scale. Okay, then you're going to want to graph and I recommend start starting with your axis um, and then you want to label your starting point if you're doing it by hand.
and then graph depending on what the directions say one to two cycles always graph one cycle at the very least um, and I think that that's everything okay we can always go back and add to it so let's do an example so let's do y equals three times cosine of 2x plus pi and then plus one. So first thing we want to do is make that list. All right. So uh, let's do the axis. And I always go in the same order so that I always remember everything where I try to go in the same order. So our axis is going to be y equals 1, our amplitude is going to be 3, the period, so the length of a cycle, is going to be 2 pi over b, which in this case is 2 pi divided by 2, so it's going to be pi. Um, and that helps you find the critical point distance. Right? So we take that and we divide it by 4. Because we have a starting point and then we need to know, okay, how far until we go to the max? How far until we go to the back to the axis? How far do we go to the min and back? Okay. Um, phase shift. Um, so we take my bx plus c, 2x plus pi, set it equal to 0 and solve. So x is going to equal negative pi over 2. Now for your scale, and sometimes you're given a coordinate plane already so you don't have to do this, but for your scale what you want to do is you need to be able to graph your phase shift, and you need to be able to graph your critical points distance. And so the best way to make sure you can graph both of those um, is to make sure your scale on your axis is something that will give you both of these. So usually you can just get a common denominator. So if this is negative pi over 2, this is pi over 4, um, we could make our scale pi over 4 would work. We, do, we could just multiply them together and do pi over 8. Um, let's do, let's just do pi over 8. So you can see that at the very least, you could always just multiply them together and do 2 times 4. So, then we can also talk about counting correctly. So when I'm making my y-axis, I need to take my axis, my sinusoidal axis into account, and my amplitude. So the highest, right, 3 plus 1 is 4. I personally always like to go one higher, so this is going to be, I'm going to go up to five. And then um, it's got to go down to negative two, so I'm going to go to negative three. Okay, so now I'm going to have one-eighth pi over four, right, one-eighth, two-eighths. You could even do 1 8 2 8 3 8 4 8 5 8 6 8 7 8 8 8 and at 8 8 we're at pi, right? I'm going to label every other one, so 1 8 2 8 this will be pi over 4, 3 8 4 8 we're at pi over 2, 5 8 6 8 3 pi over 4, um, 7 8. Um, okay, and then I'm just going to go a little bit more, I guess. So, 8, 9, 10 eighths, 11, let's do 12. Okay. Now I want to do the same, but going to the left. So, 1 eighth, 2 eighths, remember we're negative.
You don't really have to count over here because you already did it, so you could just look on the other side. Okay, that should be enough. Um, All right, so when I'm graphing, you want to start with um, your axis so that you don't accidentally do that wrong. So that's going to be y equals 1. And you should label it. And then um, we're going to want to plot our starting point. So normally, because it's cosine, right, it's at 0, 1, but we have an amplitude of 3 and a phase shift. So because this is negative pi over 2, that means that we're going to go left pi over 2. So here we are. And then it's cosine, and cosine starts at 1 normally, so we're going to go up 1, 2, 3. So my starting point is at negative pi over 2, comma 4. Okay. Now my critical point distance is pi over 4. So the next part is going to be on my axis, but I need to make sure I go over pi over 4. And so since, since this is a scale of 1 eighth, you have to make sure you don't just accidentally go over 1 eighth. You want to go over 2 eighths, right, because that's a distance of pi over 4. So axis. And now I'm going to go min, axis, max, axis, oops, wait, one, two, min, axis, max, and then a little to the left. All right, and that should be good. So now I want to connect these. And because I'm starting and ending at a min and a max, Make sure you curve it back down so it shows that it's going to keep following this exact same pattern. So just to go over the critical point distance, remember the distance between here and here needs to be pi over 4. Because I made my scale pi over 8, and I could have made it pi over 4, that would have been fine. But I just kind of wanted to show you because that sometimes you do have to get a common denominator that isn't one of the two. Um, so you want to make sure you're counting correctly using your scale. And that's it. We'll do more examples in class.